For us, gold remains a store of value that also serves as an insurance against many known and unknown risks. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancy, where each day he brings you the precious metals and financial news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancy, and in today's morning meeting, we're going to look at how stock advisors look at gold, a little humorously. Uh, we're also going to break down yesterday's action. Significant day, so let's take a closer look at it. And then we'll look at some news. We're also going to touch on um, the potential for a real second wave of inflation in premium. But uh, let's start with the markets, and I'll leave some charts up, and we'll do the charts uh, first, right after that. Okay. The dollar's down 17 at 105.97. Ten-year yield is up a basis point at 462. S&P 500 is 50.26. Up 14 handles. The VIX is 1658. Continuing to get hit with gold. Gold is 2302. Significant level. I'll explain why in a second. Uh, down 24. Silver's 2691, down 27 cents. Copper is down six and a half cents at 440. Gold, silver is hovering at 85, really 77. Uh, WTI is down 71 cents at 8206. Natural gas 182, peaking up a little bit. It's still early, but it could be into some seasonality buying here. Uh, Bitcoin is down 730 at 66.080. Ethereum is 31.74, down 27. Palladium and platinum are both down about seven and a half to eight bucks at 9.99 and 9.09, respectively. Wheat was the big rally yesterday. Uh, wheat was uh, up like 3%. Trading 587 now, up five cents. Corn and soybeans are either side of unchanged, mixed uh, at 434 and 1162, respectively. All right, charts. Now, yesterday we gave some levels and charts, and on Sunday we gave you know reasons and levels to look for. We're just going to give you a little bit of just levels and price activity yesterday. So give you a synopsis if you're looking for a handle. Um, we talked about this yesterday morning. We talked about all the reasons for a bull market are in. The bullion banks had all done their thing. Uh, they'd all raised. Uh, some raised early, some raised late. The ones that raised early made money. The ones that raised late did not. It's another conversation. Um, but all these bullish things were in the market, even though the media wasn't talking about them. And... Three bearish things came out uh, late last week, and one was the COMEX raising margins a second time, uh, and then China also raising margins. That's the second thing. And for two exchanges that don't talk to each other, that's kind of coordinated, don't you think? And that happened on Friday, and it went into effect today for China. The other thing is China put some capital controls on prohibiting excessive speculation on the futures exchange uh, from spilling over into the physical exchange. So that means they knew that there was excessive speculation. And let's be fair. If you're a Chinese bank or a Chinese fund, you're owned by the government or controlled by the government. So they were speculating uh, with permission, to say the least. All right. So those things conspired against gold. And we talked about several things uh, that were kind of showing their hand in the market on Sunday. One of them was, this is a Bollinger Band. On the daily Bollinger Band, the market had been running up very strong, uh, using this yellow line almost as support. And then it spent four or five days underneath it, which is rare uh, in, in a bull run. It's a sign of tiredness. You can look at it as an RSI weakening. And so on Sunday, uh, we decided that the market was toppy at least short term and that if it dropped it would go to the red line first which it essentially did uh and then once that happened i got everyone to look at the weekly version of this and the weekly version basically says we're just overbought coming back to normal which brings us to the first level the first level that i said to be aware of uh in a bigger picture move 
is 22.9197. So call it 22.91. The market, if the market is healthy on a week to week basis, 22.91, it will not close below 22.91 on the week. If it's closing below 22.91, you should be aware that it could run all the way down to here, this red line. Now, I'm not predicting that at all. And I'm not even going to put that number out there because there's other numbers along the way. I'm just saying, you know, today's Tuesday. You want to see how the market acts the rest of the week. You know, if you're buying dips, uh, you want to, you don't want to buy a dip until Friday if it's trading 2291. You want to buy it today. Uh, th- these are things you want to think about. All right. So so that's that's the the big overview. Uh, I'll give you a couple levels. And you know, every technician has levels for you. I'm not a technician. I'm giving you levels that I use to manage my own position. So let's get rid of the Bollinger Bands and we'll give this to you. If it doesn't hold 2291 on a weekly close basis, it will trade between 2235 and 2182. This is me talking to myself. I'm it's not like I'm predicting, but I'm just giving you my rules. It will trade between it should trade between 2231 and 2182. Uh, I'm not gonna get into why I believe that, but I believe that. So if the market breaks 2182, okay then I'm looking for the market to go to 2145, 2150, okay? So giving you all these downside numbers is not to make you panic and think we're going down. It's to make you prepared if we go down. Now, I'm going to give you some rea- a reality check here. For the first time in forever, people have bought gold and aren't making money, right? Bought it, made money, bought it, made money, bought it, made money. Never lost money, bought it, made money. Everyone who bought it on one day made money one to three days later. Everyone. This is the first time that you have someone who bought it in here that didn't make money. Those people are not making money. They will sell. And if they make other people sell, it cascades. Now, a lot of the big buying here, the big buyers, the macro guys, they got in here. So they're not going to start selling until we get under here. 2160. So I want them to buy the dip. Anyway, uh, to give you the mechanics of what happened yesterday, all those margin raises, you know, in China and the US, they forced commodity trading advisors, which are basically representatives for the retail, uh, to sell. I don't know why. I think they were losing a lot of money in stocks on Friday. And so they closed their CTA shorts. I mean, they closed their CTA longs in stocks, right? And then they got margin calls and closed their gold longs because the raised margin and they were short wheat and they covered their wheat. So this whole dynamic from Friday to Monday was CTA long speculating in stocks, getting hammered and taking profits in gold uh, to cover margin calls. Conceptually, that's what that's about. And that's happened for years, if not decades. Anyway, enough with this for now. You have my levels. Uh, uh, I think you just, just want to... <clears throat> you want to be aware that this group of people here that bought and haven't made money, these guys, you, hopefully they sold. If they haven't sold, then they're going to be selling in here. Every time it rallies, they're hoping it goes up so they can sell it higher, right? And that hope, hope, you know, hope is a killer. Fear, hope, whatever the movie says, hope is a killer. You don't want to be involved with hope if you're trading. If you're investing, you can hope because you can, you know, set the clock ahead and worry about it five years from now. But you don't want to be involved in hope if you're trading. All right. So let's go to the the rest of this. Um, Irritating gold. Okay. I love this. Uh, Here's the front page. If you're you're interested in in more in depth of what was going to happen before it happened, you know, we got lucky and... uh, is gold headed for a rug pull? And you want to look at who is buying if gold funds are now selling. And that was the person who cried uncle. All right. So in premium, T.S. Lombard uh, uh, opines on the very real possibility of a second wave of inflation. The gist of it is there's a chart that's been going around forever, this one. That's the whole 
uh, double wave of inflation. I personally think we're in a triple wave, which is even worse. Uh, but the double wave of inflation has been debunked because to have the second wave, you need an oil embargo or oil crisis. Well, T.S. Lumbar reminds us that the chronic problem in the Middle East is now one of those things where on any given day, you can have a disruption in oil. It's it, The chance is persistently always there, and the oil market's going to start discounting that. And if you have an event that disrupts oil flow, well, you're going to have your second uh, bump. So oil is the focus for the next wave, okay? Oil is the focus for the next wave, and all the analysis will be about that now. Uh, commentary. All right, so... This is to make you understand that most of the world is just nowhere near where you are in the perception of risk, all right? Most of the world does not like gold. Most of the Keynesian, neo-Keynesian world does not like gold, does not like silver, does not like anything that doesn't do anything uh, that defies gravity when it's not adding value to humanity. Anyway, but the, the reality of it is they all make money on commissions and they make money on commissions on research and ideas. So they make money by being smart and by being right. They don't make money by being uh, less right than a pet rock. So I have a report by uh, a high net worth investment firm uh, that was shared with me. And they're forced to talk about gold. And they are so dismissive and derisive of it. It's hilarious because it's what we've been reading for the last 10 years, but it's happening with gold at all-time highs. So hope and denial, same thing. So let me read a little bit from it for you. First of all, their subtitle is Irritating Gold Price Records. The most remarkable development in the first quarter was probably the gold price. After a furious final spurt, the price of the troy ounce reached a new historic high of US dollar 2229 on the last trading day of the quarter despite continuous outflows from gold ETS. Since the beginning of the year, the increase has amounted to 8% or even 10.5% in euro terms. This development is also noteworthy because it took place in secret and seemingly without any reason. I'm telling you, man, these firms, they just love to gaslight you because you're long gold and they're not. They need to keep their investors on board. Everything about this report, it's hilarious. You have to read it. Everything about this report is, we don't know why it went up. It shouldn't have gone up. People are, are disinvesting. And then later on, it's, well, China bought, but China's dumb. You know, uh, China's in a crisis. They don't know what they're doing. It's, 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 it's textbook gaslighting, but it's also defending your position to your clients because you weren't fucking long gold for the run-up, and they didn't make money, so you have to attack it. There's no CEO of gold. There's no CEO of gold pushing back saying, how dare you? There isn't. So that's why they get away with it. Anyway, uh, let me uh, go through a little more. Then it goes on to tell, this is me, this is my, my writing here. Then it goes on to tell you the gold-loving Chinese are the culprits and are stupid. Uh, China is also struggling with a severe real estate crisis a sluggish economy, U.S. technology sanctions, and rapidly increasing debt. For geopolitical reasons, China is also likely to be keen to further reduce the proportion of its currency reserves invested in U.S. treasuries, recently only 26%. China has presumably shifted a not insignificant portion of its dollar reserves into gold and could continue this strategy. The actual gold holdings are now likely to be significantly higher than the 25, 2258 tons officially reported by the central bank at the end of March. It's more like 5,000 tons. All right. So, and then it goes on to tell you why they're buying gold. They shouldn't be buying gold. Uh, uh, gold. And then they have to, there are all kinds of things in here that say, you know, uh, the Chinese buying is stupid. Uh, you should have your money in stocks. Anyway, it ends with, to give you an idea of like how, how denial people are in it, that section. It's a big section, but that section ends with for us, gold remains a store of value that also serves as an insurance against many known 
and unknown risks. That's true. That's what it is. It's insurance. Because gold has no counterparty risk. That's true. Which shows they're not dumb. They understand what gold is. And then they say, and if the price shoots up to excessively high levels, profits can be taken. So if you're long gold, they want you to sell it to put it in stocks. It's just, it's just you don't sell your insurance when the house is on fire. That's what they're telling you to do. Anyway, these people will be the ruin of a generation. Ruination of a generation. These people are repulsive. You know, that's the way it is. All right. So anyway, market news. Tesla kicks off tech earnings on Wednesday, on Tuesday with its stock at its lowest point price since early 2023. Yeah. So this could be a sell the rumor by the news type of thing. Big week for earnings. I think uh, Google, Microsoft, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the federal, I love this one. The Federal Trade Commission on Monday sued to block the merger of two premium handbag makers because that's important right now. Nobody's buying handbags anymore. Goldman Sachs is closing down its automated investing business for the masses after clinching a deal with Betterment. Yeah, uh, Marcus was the name of that organization. And it's a sign that the financial industry is shrinking. Uh, giant investment companies are taking over the financial system. Uh, that's not new, but they're going to tell you that. Geopolitically, uh, it's all about Israel again. Uh, will Israel uh, do more? Okay, so you can read that. Data on deck, again, it's a back-ended week, right? But today is uh, Flash PMI services, which are very important right now. Uh, they were really low, and they're off the lows, and they're on their they're starting to move aggressively higher now, which is a sign of inflation, okay? So uh, let me just, sorry, I... Uh, I covered the uh, stocks a little bit there, right? There we go. We don't want to cover the tape too much. All right, so Thursday we have a GDP and Friday we have PCE. So, and we have the reports. We have three things for you today. One, the hilarious investment newsletter to high net worth individuals who will be poor in about 20 years. Uh, we have uh, a nice little technical package uh, from a, a firm that does the work. It's nothing, I think, uh, aggressively predictive, but it really gives you a nice base. And then we have the TS uh, Lombard Report, which uh, I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of Dario uh, Perkins writing, who wrote this. So I'm Vince. Let's check quickly back in the markets. Uh, gold is down 24, holding that 23.91, 92 area. It's okay if we dip below it. We can't close the week below it. Okay, so some of you that are Fibonacci people, you're going to do a Fibonacci from here to this high, and you're going to do a Fibonacci from here to this high. Those are reasonable things that I would do, and I would expect buyers to come in at those levels at least the first time. The question is, is there anyone left that needs to buy the dip? Uh, because I do think a short was blown out, and I think it was a bank, uh, or at least a trader at a, at a bank was blown out uh, last week. Let's see if there's anyone left to be short. All right, I'm Vince. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this morning's Markets and Metals Update with Vince Lancey. Brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, where this week's special is Junk Silver for only $2.75 over spot. Junk Silver is the pre-1965 dimes and quarters and one of the products where we did see premium spike in the past couple of years. So you can find out more by calling us at 833 326 4653 or emailing Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.